Yo, what's up guys? This is Woofy here and it's time for another Deadbolt Dragons reviews and this this time we'll be reviewing Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Yeah! The Kanto region. The place where Pokemon Trainer Red and Ash Ketchum both started their respective Pokemon journeys. The region in which 10 year old new trainers head out on their journey to reach the top of the Indigo Plateau and defeat the Pokemon League and become the Pokemon League champion, the ultimate trainer in the whole entire Pokemon world. And it all begins with one simple choice. The fire Pokemon, Charmander. The water Pokemon, Squirtle. And the grass Pokemon, Bulbasaur. Or if you waited a while after those games and you got Pokemon Yellow instead, Japanese Mickey Mouse by the name of Pikachu. This is Pokemon Week, Kanto Edition. Even after all these years, I still mourn the loss of my Game Boy Color and my Pokemon Red cartridge. <laughs> Level 100 fucking Venusaur! Oh, it's pretty damn lucky that anything post-original Johto couldn't be transferred onto future games, or else I would have lost my nut at that. Level 100 Venusaur. Yes, I was one of the 1% that chose Bulbasaur, your point is. Back then, I felt it was my greatest accomplishment of all that I took that level 100 Venusaur straight to the Pokemon League. I mean, back then, it was lucky if you were ever going to actually beat the Pokemon League even once. It was very lucky. I suppose the Pokemon nowadays I could get a pretty cool. God damn it, meat! Back then, apart from Pokemon Red, the only other Pokemon game I tried was Pokemon Yellow, and I got a foreign version while I was over on holiday in Bulgaria, and they had a bunch of Game Boy games, and they were all, they were all foreign language, but I, ma I managed to get on well with Pokemon Yellow. Especially fun, <sighs> dragging this guy around as your starter. Um, especially fun fighting Team Rocket, because it did follow the anime to some degree. And it was a good, it was a good game. I didn't get through it like hundred percent as I did Pokemon Red, and I'm I'm still sore about that. I'm still sore about losing the Game Boy Color. I'm still sore about losing Pokemon Red. It's it's sad that beyond the original Johto games that you can't transfer your Pokemon over. But that's another story for another day. Um, and I'll get I'll, I'll get to that when I get to Johto, or when I get to my speculations video. Um, but yeah, that was it was it was a monumental time when Pokemon Red and Blue came out. Or if you're in Japan, Pokemon Green. And I was just sitting in front of my TV screen being the nine year old wrestling fan that I was, really didn't care that much about anything else on TV, and I was bored. And I switched on ITV, it's a channel over here in the UK, and it was this odd style of cartoon. I didn't know the term anime at the time, so don't get mad at me for calling anime a cartoon, because at the time I didn't know that what it was. But now I would say it's an anime. Back then I was like, oh this is a new cartoon. Then I saw the opening. I mean, as soon as it opened with the words, I want to be the very best like no one ever was, that was it. And I was hooked from then on. And then I see Japanese Mickey Mouse and this kid wearing an odd red shaped hat having their adventures going from town to town I believe it was the episode um, I believe it was either episode 1 or 2 that I started but it's when they get to Viridian City and Pikachu blows up the Pokemon Center and from then on I was hooked um, I followed it I mean uh, I will admit, after beating Pokemon Red and then capturing Mewtwo and then um, losing my Game Boy Color, I was disheartened. I still remained a fan of Pokemon the anime. I didn't play many of the games. 
I mean, I did get an opportunity whenever one of my friends would say, hey, Jace, you want to try this? And I did. Well, when I did have friends back then. Because I wasn't, I was looked down upon quite a lot. But that was my experience with Kanto back then. And lately they've re-released a Kanto on an Indigo League DVD set. They've now called the original Pokemon series Pokemon Indigo League. And that that's that's pretty clever. Um and yeah, that's a, that's about it. Um my experiences with Kanto are um, especially in later generations because I got back into Pokemon when I had a copy of uh, Pokemon Black 2 and I, it was very very difficult for me first time round I mean the opening of this video is me po playing Pokemon White 2 I got that later um, and it was a... I follow the same rhetoric as the people who go on about um, oh only the Gen 1 was great you've got to appreciate all the Gens if you want to be a true fan in all honesty Gen 1ers are like the lowest common denominator. Um, it was a bit disheartening at the time that there wasn't many Generation 1 or truly Generation 2 because I did like Gen 2. I mean, Houndour is probably one of my favourite Pokemon ever. doesn't beat Scyther, but it is my, my second favourite Pokemon ever. Um, it was disheartening not to see that many in the Gen 5. But I'll get to Gen 5 when I get to my Gen 5 video. Uh, and it was just basically the the more common ones. I mean, nowadays, because of the all the casual fans, if this guy isn't in a Pokemon game, they're not going to buy it. And I've been itching since... Uh, because I never got a GBA and I never got to play Fire Red or Leaf Green, I have been chomping at the bit to get back to Kanto and see what they could they could do with it in an updated setting. Especially with the 3D graphics they have of X and Y now, and I'll get to that when I get to my Kalos slash New Hoenn video. And, you know, there's so much that can be done with it. The legend of Lavender Town. I mean, just listening to that theme nowadays. I'm 25 years old. I am 25 years old. And listening to the Lavender Town theme still scares the crap out of me. Um, and uh, plus, I've watched the creepy pasta of Pokemon Ghost Black, and that scares the crap out of me as well. And somebody's obviously made a fan-made project of Pokemon Ghost Black and whatever. And the earliest memories I have of Pokemon in the Kanto region, um, obviously Pikachu blowing up the Pokemon Center, um, Team Rocket's infamous speech, Talking Meowth. Now Meowth is like my third favourite Pokemon ever, and it wasn't for the fact that he talked, it's just that he's so damn adorable. Um, Jesse and James, because James came off as very, very gay. At, at the time, I just thought he was a girl in a, as a guy. But Jesse and James, I mean, the, the name combination is an obvious pun on Jesse James. Meowth, he had a Brooklyn accent as... Some people seem to think that if you're going to give everybody a New York accent, it may as well be Brooklyn. But it worked for Meowth. I, I'll, I'll give them that. It worked for Meowth very, very well. Brock, the womanizer who never seemed to open his fucking eyes. I mean, how, how do you hit on girls like this? How? How? No wonder he fails. His eyes are shut. And, no, and, and Ash, who never seemed to grow up in the entire time that Pokemon's been on the air as an anime. And Misty, who seemingly towards the end of the first series, her shorts kept getting shorter. Suffer perverts. Um, and the, Kanto, for all intents and purposes, was like one of the best seasons of the entire anime. Back to the game, so... Um, Red, as a trainer, he's made sporadic appearances over most of the games. Same as Professor Oak. I mean, Professor Oak, he doesn't differ much from 
his game counterpart to his anime counterpart. And the only time he ever differs is during the Pokemon Origins anime. And I'm going to get to that shortly. Oh, excuse me. I shouldn't be doing that on camera. It's rude. Um, he, yeah, he appears like periodically throughout all of the games. I mean, I'll get to it in Johto. I will get to it in Unova because whether you like it or not, he actually was in Unova if you actually checked the subquest. Um, and then there's the Pokemon Origins anime, which, to be honest, criminally too short was amazing, an amazing anime, even if they did, like, abridge the storyline a little bit. Professor Oak was finally voiced by somebody else and actually made to look more adult. Red was finally given a voice. He does not speak in dots. He does not speak in dots. Gary is renamed back to Blue. And I'm, I'm assuming that in Pokemon Green, he was called Green. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but he's renamed back to Blue, and he's actually more of a badass than Gary Oak was. Or is, or whatever. Because I, so, I haven't seen Gary in the anime for so long. Um, and that, that's all there is to say about the Pokemon Origins anime. I mean, Mega Charizard X vs Mewtwo, probably the best fight over the whole anime. My opinion, the best fight over the whole entire course of that series. You ever wonder how the, over the course of the series, how Ash came into possession of oh, quite a lot of Tauros? Well, due to famous Poketubers like the Jaywits, I found out that the reason Ash has all those Tauros was from an episode that was not dubbed and was actually banned. Um, Ash goes to the infamous Safari Zone. Now, as far as Pokeballs go, Safari, the Safari Ball is probably one of my favourite Pokeballs. Um, but Ash goes to the Safari Zone with Misty and Brock and Pikachu. And he wants to enter the Safari Zone. And the clerk pulls a gun on him. You can kind of see where he gets banned. And then during the course of the episode, Jesse and James and Meowth crash proceedings... And James holds the gun to the clerk's head. So, you know, you can kind of understand why um, the episode got banned. And, and on, on the subject of other banned episodes, there was also an episode where everybody's at the beach and Team Rocket roll up and James has got, for some reason, inflatable breasts. The fuck, Japan? In fact... When something stupid like that happens over one of my videos, I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to take a picture of myself, and then I'm going to give it a caption, and then I'm going to put a soundbite over the middle of it, like... Really, nigga? Of course, I should probably mention this will be a theme for um, future videos of this week going on. Um, the legendaries of the Kanto region. Now, I've mentioned Mewtwo. I mean, he is infamous for the film that came out, Mewtwo Strikes Back. That film will be in the hearts of Pokemon fans forever. Then there's the elusive Mew. I'm gonna like pipe in a little video right here and leave it at that because in Pokemon Red and Blue he was not actually meant to be caught. He was a developer's thing that they slipped in for a Pokemon that only they could catch. And then of course you have Articuno Zapdos and Moltres, the three legendary birds who are more famous for the Johto movie, Pokemon the Movie 2000. Well, I would say it's Johto, it's more Orange Islands. Um, Orange Islands were like anime exclusive and they appeared on their own respective islands. Um, they're all beasts used in the correct way. Mewtwo, um, he can be broken with the right learn set. Mew, well, Mew's allowed to be broken because it's Mew, and Mew can learn any move ever. And then there is the very, the hidden legendary of Kanto, Missing No. Now, I have a great photoshopped picture of what I consider to be Missing No. That was like a combination of... Uh, fan art and me playing around with Photoshop. And Missing No 
while it's fun to have and it's fun to train, it's a case of train him if you dare. Because it can screw up your game, it can corrupt your save file and you'd have to start all the way from the beginning. But missing no is pretty damn powerful. Sky attack. What more is there left to say? And missing no, he has his own like Easter eggs throughout the whole series, most recently in X and Y. You catch it for a split second if you're looking really, really hard enough. But that's it for the legendaries. Um, Mew, to this day, if you still have the Gen 1 and Gen 2 games, Mew is still very, very elusive. It's very, very sought after. Nowadays, not so much, because you can trade for Mews now. You can trade for legendaries, and you can trade for those kind of legendaries. Mew, you can easily trade for these days, but back then it was like the holy grail of Pokemon. And highly sought after if you still have the Gen 1 games, and you can't do the glitch. But I will link to a video where that glitch is actually done. But for now, I think I'm going to wrap up the Kanto episode. I'm going to talk about new Kanto when I get to Generation 3 because Fire Red and Leaf Green they are classed as new Kanto and I will be covering that and I will also cover new new Kanto when I get to Gen 4 and I do Gold Soul Silver but for now that's it guys I hope you enjoyed this video I've been Woofy this has been video one of Pokemon Week, and we'd all like to say, peace. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and everything, and if you could for a moment to check out my other videos on my channel, and if you haven't already, subscribe and keep it here for Deadbolt Dragons. Peace.